if, if the government, I was saying earlier when we studied efficient unemployment, uh, many governments have a mandate to maintain the unemployment at its efficient level. Public employment is a very effective way to do it because public employment allows you to control your aggregate labor demand and to maintain unemployment at the level that you want, you know, by moving your aggregate labor demand along the labor supply. Uh, now, is that an optimal policy in the sense of, is that a policy that would maximize welfare to use public employment to maintain the economy at its efficient unemployment rate? Well, it depends a little bit on the value of public goods and services. So if we think that public goods and services are as valuable as private goods and services, so for instance, if you think that a school run by the government is as good as a private school, if you think that, uh, you know, services, say, so the kind of healthcare you can get in a public hospital is as good as the healthcare that you get in a private hospital and these type of things. Then, you know, and, you know, in many countries that's the case. So if you, you know, in the US, I, uh, I can't really say, uh, just because, you know, government tends to be kind of run down in, in many places. And so public services are actually not very high quality sometimes, not just due to lack of funding, but if you take a, you know, a country like France where I grew up, you know, public schools are almost always better than private schools. Public hospitals are almost always better than private hospitals. So there is no reason you know, for public goods and services to be um, lower quality than private goods and services when there is good funding for them. So if you take the perspective that you know, these things are roughly the same, you know, they are the same people, you know, the same teachers that would teach, except they could be employed by a private university or a public university. Um, so in a world like this, it doesn't really matter whether things are produced by the private sector or the public sector. From a welfare perspective, if these things are perfectly substitutable, then you don't care whether, uh, you know, government wouldn't care whether things are produced by the government or by private firms. Now, in a world like this, we are back to the situation we analyzed when we studied efficient unemployment. In a world like this, since the composition of goods between you know, private goods and public goods, private services and public services is irrelevant, if we make the assumption that these things are just exactly the same, then the only thing that matters is to maximize the amount of goods and services that are produced because the composition doesn't matter. And in a world like that, what you want to do is indeed maintain unemployment at its efficient level and, and uh, public hiring is a great way to do that. You know, in a, basically in a world like that, what would happen is that the private sector would go, would grow and shrink over the business cycle. But then the government would exactly compensate these changes in size of the private sector by growing in bad times and, and shrinking in good times. So the total amount of production by the entire economy, public and private sector would remain the same. And basically, in a world like this, the government would be able to perfectly smooth out uh, business cycle fluctuations. That would be ideal. If, which, you know, is, is probably realistic, public goods and services and private goods and services are not perfectly su substitutable. So what the government does is not exactly what the private sector does. Then, in fact, that's a bit complicated to show, but you can show that this policy is no longer optimal, what's optimal is to reduce the unemployment gap, you know, the, the distance between current unemployment and exchange unemployment, you want to reduce that to public hiring, but not all the way so as to eliminate the unemployment gap. So basically, the government will do something, but will not completely close the unemployment gap. And in fact, in the readings, um, there is some work that I've done with a manual size where we establish these results uh, formally. Um, so we show that it's uh, optimal to use, so basically to increase the size of the public sector in bad times, to shrink it in good times, but not so as to completely offset fluctuations in the private sector. So there are still some business cycle fluctuations that remain. You know? uh, but it's a bit more technical to establish that fact, but that, that's what you would have. All right.